everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this installment of Coffee with Callisto. Today, I'm here with my colleague, Paul Aguilar, who's our first violinist in the quartet, and we're going to be getting to know Paul a little bit better today. So Paul, why don't you start by introducing yourself, uh, tell us where you're from, and how you started violin. Absolutely. Uh, my family is in South Carolina currently. Um, I moved around a bit growing up. I started violin when I was five years old. Uh, actually, my older sister was my first teacher, and she taught me for a few years uh, until I was about 10 years old, I believe. Uh, and then I started uh, being able to work with some other teachers, some after school music programs, and, and uh, yeah, kind of went from there. So at what point did you know that it, you wanted to play string quartets? I think very early on, I'd say around 10, um, I knew that I wanted to do something in music as far as what I was doing with my life. And it probably wasn't just a few years after that that I really wanted to do chamber music. I had the great opportunity of being in a public school chamber music program, which is pretty rare for a public school music program, mm -hmm. and uh, had a wonderful teacher there who was very inspiring, very encouraging, and I just loved playing in small ensembles. I loved chamber music. So I don't know if it was exactly the string quartet that I wanted, but I knew I wanted to do something in chamber music. Um, and as I went throughout high school, middle school, high school, um, I think that continued to develop and, and I sort of realized that the string quartet was kind of the, the pinnacle of, you know, being able to have a career in chamber music. And mm -hmm. I had, you know, an awe and respect for it that almost made me feel like it wasn't possible. Um, so when I went to Cleveland Institute of Music, um, definitely playing in a string quartet was sort of my ideal but it seemed out of out of touch, like uh, like it would take a miracle to happen. So now that you are in a string quartet, uh, what are some things that you didn't know about life in a string quartet that you didn't expect? Yes, yeah, so one thing in particular, I think, and of course, um, having lived uh, most of uh, the majority of you know my life as a musician so far, not being in a professional string quartet, I can definitely uh, remember what this felt like and that's uh, what I'm talking about is how it feels to perform and perform mm -hmm. so frequently as we do in the string quartet yeah. and I remember before the quartet um, each performance would really uh, it seemed so important to me and I remember getting so nervous about it and mm -hmm. I think it was especially because they were so few and far between right. um, for most even music students we don't have uh, nearly the number of opportunities to perform as you know, a professional ensemble does. It's a real luxury to be able to perform much more often. You just get much more comfortable entering into that mindset and being able to deliver on, on a high level of excellence um, without having to do all sorts of rituals and you know, you know, hype yourself up for it. And I, I remember that that was a huge part of my life. Uh, yeah. I had to do a specific set of things before each concert, uh, the day of, days before, the week of. Um, and now uh, being able to perform so often, um, it doesn't really matter. Right. You just uh, whatever, how you feel physically, mentally, wh where you are, how your instrument sounds, um, you, just, you just do what you do and you need to do it at the highest possible level. And right. in a way that's pretty free. Well, and that's a pretty important skill to learn how to develop, especially kind of being in some of the weird performance situations we've found ourselves in. And Certainly. We will get to that later. Yes. Um, so you're our first violinist. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the um, perks and or challenges of being the first violinist of a quartet? Yeah, so as the first violinist, there, there can be a lot of of pressure in terms of your sound or your personality, um, it you know it people will be watching you a lot or listening to you principally, um, and so there is some of that pressure for sure, um, and that's something that I think a lot about. Um, I feel like I have a responsibility to uh, to really make everything um, very personal and and just as beautiful and as expressive and as intentional as I possibly can. Um, but also, um, I think what a lot of people don't realize is um, how little I actually control in the group. Mm -hmm. 
um, and without uh, the other three of you um, doing all the types of things that you do behind the scenes which are actually driving most of everything that we're doing, um, especially in performance, um, I, I would be nothing. So, <laughs> so uh, a lot of people think the first violinist leads the group, directs the group, um, and uh, that's not really true. <laughs> so this has obviously been a very strange year for us um, and for musicians everywhere. So what are some things that keep you motivated, especially during times like these? This sounds like a very nerdy answer, but unfortunately it's true. <laughs> and honestly, what, what motivates me and what inspires me is music. And uh, listening to music, I absolutely love music. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, from, a, from a very young age, I had siblings that really got me uh, into it, one in particular. And I feel like he you know, put, put this bug in me that you know, has, has never left. And um, I just love listening to music, finding new pieces that I don't know, um, listening to pieces that I love over and over again, studying them, noticing different parts of, of them and, and seeing them in new lights. And, um, and often just listening to some really great music um, really inspires me, really motivates me. Um, and that, that kind of sounds funny with how, how much music we play, but yeah. it's, it's true for me. Yeah. Uh, maybe not for everybody, but, but for me, um, that really, really inspires me. Yeah, well, you picked the right career then. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about some other artists or genres that you also love? Absolutely. I'm, I'm really interested in, uh, I mean, again, we could pick so, so many, <laughs> but uh, two, two artists, they're both in the field of jazz, actually. Um, one is the pianist, Bill Evans, mm -hmm. and he's incredibly inspiring, um, uh, not only for, for his playing, for his arrangements, um, but also his, his uh, thoughts on self-improvement, mm -hmm. which I found incredibly helpful um, and resonate with me, and, and I think they resonate with us as a quartet, how mm -hmm. we go about learning and improving. And the other would be Billie Holiday. Um, I just love her voice and the inflections and the colors that she she creates and the timing and um, could just listen to that all day um, and it's so inspiring for for how I want to express music that I'm working on. Definitely, yeah, great answers. Um, so back to quartet life, um, do you have a favorite rehearsal technique in the quartet? You know, we were talking about this earlier how when we started the quartet, um, we each had different uh, areas that we were most passionate about uh, as far as things that we wanted to work on in the quartet. And gratefully over time, we came to all share each other's passions right. so that we were equally um, dedicated to, to working <laughs> on all of those things. I think from the start, um, I've always been interested in intonation and working on intonation. Um, there's nothing quite like the feeling and the sound of actually playing in tune, which yeah. is very hard and very rare, um, but it certainly is it's our intention as a quartet, and I know that we spend a lot of time on that, and I'm very grateful that we do. Another thing that I think was funny that we were talking about is how, um, even from the start, um, one of my uh, worst fears, if you might call it that, was that um, when we're playing something, we would uh, rush over timings or, or whatnot. Um, and for you, it was always uh, maybe uh, in opposition that, that we would take too much time and, and wouldn't have a, an overarching feeling of, of a group of phrases. And, and so I think we've always been in, in opposition <laughs> of each other a little bit, which is healthy. And, and I'm glad that we have uh, you know, different sides of, of uh, a topic in our group. And that could go for many different Things, things in the music but yeah you know, for sure. well it keeps a good balance and i know that even though i don't always say it i'm very grateful for your point of view <laughs> likewise likewise <laughs> so um so this brings us back now to some funny stories you may have from performances maybe some performance fails um do any of those come to mind absolutely um one that springs to mind is when we were playing dvorak a flat string quartet in the Banff competition in 2019 and uh, we were nearing the, really the last page, the final climax of the entire quartet. 
And um, of course, you know, it's just hot on stage and mm -hmm. I was very sweaty and my glasses were, <laughs> were slipping off. And, and I remember there's this part that I have repeated octaves, it's so heroic. And, and I just kind of lifted my head off the instrument <laughs> and maybe it looked very heroic, but I was just trying to get the glasses <laughs> to stay on my face. And unfortunately they fell off mm -hmm. uh, a few measures later and we finished the, the piece. Um, well, I finished the piece about my glasses on. Right. <laughs> third string quartet would be black quartet. Mm. Uh, I absolutely love that piece. I think it is one of the most wonderful creations um, of humanity <laughs> and I have never gotten tired of that piece. Uh, the countless times I've listened to it um, when we played it before and I'm sure we'll play it again. I can't wait to play it again in the quartet. Um, I just love that piece. It's definitely one of those underrated masterpieces for sure. What's your coffee shop order? Um, whenever we go to a coffee shop, I think I'm always the one that orders something different every time. I usually end up regretting what I got because uh, one of the other drinks that you guys got was better. <laughs> well, that's the perk of having four people, right? Four different <laughs> coffee orders. You can try everybody's. <laughs> um, and finally, what do you love most about being in a string quartet? I would absolutely say the music. The music that we get to work on, we get to study, we get to perform, that we get to share with audiences is some of the most incredible music. Um, I think that a lot of composers wrote their best or their most personal or their most powerful works for string quartet. Definitely. And we have such a wealth of amazing music to play. Um, and it's a real privilege uh, and also a responsibility mm -hmm. to be part of a professional string quartet and realize that, that we are responsible for so much amazing music and to really understand it as best we can and to share it with audiences so that they can understand it as best they can. Um, so, so I would say absolutely the music. Well, thank you, Paul. Um, and thank you everybody who tuned in um, and got to know Paul a little bit better today. And we will see you next time. Hi everyone. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I can't do it. It's okay, we can do another day. Oh. Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in to this installment of Coffee with Callisto. That's awesome. Pretty loud. It's pretty loud. I'm just waiting for it. <laughs>